Hello and welcome back to Central New York's Open House. I'm your host, Jill Hayes. Today we have a very special episode for you. We're working on a beautiful old farmhouse and it's being renovated by three companies regularly seen here on Open House. And right now I'm sitting with the homeowners, Dan and Amory Jones, and one of their beautiful daughters, Lauren. Dan, how are you? Good today. How about you, Jill? I'm good. Uh, quite a project you've got going on here. It's been, it's been fun. It's been a fun four months. I've been here um, quite a bit throughout the past four months, and the transformation of this house is unbelievable. I've seen it down to studs and dust and sheetrocks and boxes of cabinets to now what it is today. It's, it's awesome. We're very happy with uh, how it's come out, and certainly the members of your show, the Kevin Fay Kitchen, Standard Insulating, and New York Sash have had a huge part in that. I love the history of this place. It's really quite interesting. Can you tell us a bit about um, your family and, and the house? This house was built in 1861 by my great-great-great-grandfather, Henry Brace. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to uh, maintain the family tradition here. And uh, this is the house I grew up in. And now we've done our own thing to, uh, to make it a little bit uh, sign of the times, but also maintain the heritage that's within the house. We're going to start to take a look at the renovations that took place here in this house. I'm going to head off to the kitchen and talk with Bob Ryan from Fay Kitchens. We just talked with Dan and Anne Marie about the major renovation that they did in this house and it's really beautiful. Yeah, it is. And, and probably, honestly, the biggest transformation would be in this kitchen. I know I might be a little biased, but um, I had the luxury of being here. I measured this job close to a year ago. Um, and I can vaguely remember what it was like, but I remember being very cut up. And one of the things you're going to you know, see here is just how nice and user-friendly this kitchen is. This island is 10 feet long, um, and it seems very large, but in this size room, I think it would be silly to make it any smaller. Um, one of the things that you can do in, instead of making the island look like a runway is to clip the corners like we did here. Uh, you see we have a small clip here. And with three small children that Dan and Anne-Marie have, um, it, it really, there's plenty of room here for, for the three of them. And then as they get older and they have kids over, this is really going to be a gathering place right. for the children. Well, I think with kids you could probably seat six children here with, with no problem and five adults. Um, this is a really nice, nice sized island. One of the things that's featured here in the island is something that we've seen in the showroom, yep. but not really have seen here in an actual kitchen. Right. This is a, a built-in mixer shelf. And one of the things that's nice to be able to see this here is that there's actually a mixer on top. This locks into place. The mixer can be used on the shelf. And if you notice, the cord is right into the cabinet. There's a plug inside the cabinet, and that's plugged in. So you never have to lift this heavy item. And of course, when you're baking, you need a lot of supplies, and there's plenty of cabinets here to keep uh, all your baking needs, especially that pantry. The pantry is a great cabinet. It's uh, three feet wide. It brings the fridge over closer into the kitchen here, which is nice. Um, but it's not too far of a walk away from the island. It's pretty easy to grab something out of there and set it uh, right down on the counter. And there's really a lot of space. Yeah, and actually, um, again, this should look familiar to you, Jill. This is the same cabinet that you have in your house. And this also looks familiar too. Yes, yep, the French door refrigerator um, has been our most popular selling refrigerator. And one of the reasons is if you look in this space here, um, when you have a two door setting like this, you can open both these doors with ease um, and not close down your walkway too much. Whereas if you had one big door, uh, it would really block this whole area. This is what I would consider the focal point of the kitchen. I think it's a really, really nice look. It's different than your typical microwave hood up over the stove. Um, a slide-in stove is nice because it actually sets on the countertop. Um, there is countertop that runs behind it. This is sort of a built-in look without the built-in price. They are more expensive than a freestanding stove, but they're much easier to change out. Like I said before, there's six and a half foot of window out of the corner to here. Um, one of the things when we were in this room, Anne-Marie wanted to be able to see uh, out behind the house towards the pool and also the driveway. Uh, this corner setup allows us to do that. Gives you a lot of natural light into the room here. And put your sink in on, on an angle like this, which I really like. One large bowl is a great way to go. And it goes along with this farmhouse look. Back in the old days, you didn't have two bowl sinks. And people are sort of moving away from them nowadays. Um, it's nice because there's not a pan in this kitchen that won't fit into that sink there. And I like the faucet. It has that um, 
you know, pull out spray feature, which is really nice. And the last component of the kitchen, which is a very useful one, is this built-in desk. Right, yeah, and this is nice because, um, you know, you have sort of a catch-all for the kitchen, but it's, it, it doesn't look like a catch-all. I mean, this looks like a piece of furniture. One of the ways we accomplish that is by doing a wooden countertop um, instead of a granite countertop like we have in the rest of the kitchen. This top is made by Dura Supreme, same people that made the cabinets, uh, and the countertop was cut into place by a carpenter. And, you know, I really think that finishes it off nicely versus just doing a, a granite top. The other thing is granite, when you're working at it like a desk, is a bit cold to the touch, so the, the wood adds some warmth to the room. Well, like we said, this kitchen really turned out beautifully. Um, everything from the floor up to the lights, and I know that the ceiling um, was, a, was a major remodeling project and that we raised the ceiling. And one company that had a lot to do with keeping it warm was Standard Insulating Company. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk more with Bob Ryan from Kevin Fay Kitchens about the ceiling, and also we'll talk with Chuck Scholl about insulating and keeping this room warm. Coming up on Central New York's Open House. One of the problems with insulating a renovation in a, of a house in the 19th century is that the framing is made out of two by fours. 